In this section, I want to teach you how to install Active Directory Domain Services on Windows Server 2019. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do though is kind of customize your server. Um, in a previous video, we went ahead and just did a straight install. We never tested anything. Um, so in this case being, we're going to go ahead and, you know, finish the, the last bit of customization you need for the server. So we're going to go to here to start and server manager. All right, close out of the Windows Admin Center. And we're going to click configure this local server. Okay, and then once everything in here is loaded, we're going to go ahead and change a few things. For example, the computer name must be changed. So the computer description, I put as server 2K19, but you can put anything you want there. It's just a quick description. Um, but in our case, it's actually going to be the active directory. So I'm just going to write it domain controller one. Okay, then we have computer name. And for this one, we're going to actually call it win 2k19 dash dc01. And then click OK. All right, click OK again. And then hit close. But do not restart because we're going to change just a few more things in here. Okay, so we're going to hit restart later. All right, the next thing we're going to work on is a, it's more of a preference if you want remote desktop turned on or turned off. Um, I usually leave it turned off because if I do have to get into the system here, I usually use Windows Admin Center. And that will be in a later video on how to install Windows Admin Center for all your servers. Then we have our Ethernet, which is assigned by DHCP. We don't want that. So here, I'm just going to double click on that. Click on Properties. All right. Now you can leave your IPv6 turned on or turned off. It's up to you. For me, I usually just turn it off when I do lab environments, unless I'm actually will be doing IPv6 you know, demonstrations. In this case, we're going to double click on Internet Protocol version 4. And now I got to go ahead and get, assign a DNS and an IP address to this. Now let me just go over here to our virtual network editor. So in a previous video, when we did the install to set everything up, I did tell everybody to do 192.168.15.0 as the subnet IP addressing. Okay. Under NAT settings. 192.168.15.2 I have. If you have a problem, um, you can use dot one, but I also know there has been some issues at times with that. So I would just use dot two as the gateway IP. So if you're still having problems connecting to the internet on your virtual machine, I would just go and change the NAT settings to two and that should fix your problem. The other thing I, I also recommend if you're still having problems, go to DNS settings. Turn off auto detect and then just go ahead and type in a preferred DNS server if you want. Um, we're actually will be doing this at the end of the video because at the end, this will be our DNS server as well. So we're going to see a two different numbers in here completely for our DNS. So once you went ahead and did all this and made sure it's available, now we got to pick an IP. So in my case, 192.168.15.10. I like dot tens. Press tab, 255.255.0. Press tab again. Now, again, if you're following along completely with me, you should be two. But if you're, just, if you're you know, working with dot one, you can use one as well. And the DNS servers, I will just go ahead and just put Google there for that one. Um, honestly, you can put any DNS service you prefer because, again, this will all change once we get past this point. So hit OK. Hit OK again. You can see everything went down. Verified. Click Details. OK. And then what I like to do here is I like to open up. So Windows key plus R, CMD and IP config just to see that everything is taken at the point. Okay, perfect. And then also I want to see if I can ping Google. 
make sure the DNS is working. So we have the working internet. The computer name is going to be changed. We have our static IP address. Last updates that are installed. When you click on that, you will be seeing that it's configured. Um, and this is under group policy. So I usually leave this alone here, um, but we will be getting into group policies later on. And we will go ahead and discuss this further in detail. Um, but if you do not want to have updates at all, change them, you have to do this all in the group policy editor. Again, the same thing here. We can go ahead and retry, check for updates. It's going to be the same when last checking for it. Windows Defender, I always leave turned on. Feedback and Diagnostics. This is a preference to you. Honestly, I give them as little as I possibly can. Um, especially in the lab environment. You know, it all the, 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 the analytics they're taking from you supposedly just helps make Windows better, more secure, and everything else of that nature. Um, but they really can't tell you what they might be taking. So it depends on how paranoid you are, honestly. IE enhanced security configuration turned off for administrators. And the reason being is because when you want to go into here and download, you know, Google Chrome or web browsers or anything of your choice, it's going to be a small nightmare. So just turn it off. Go ahead, get your updates here. Um, let me see. Here's a website everybody should be going to. Night night. Grabbing a few of your favorite web browsers, Edge, you know, Notepad Plus Plus. Anything on here you kind of want your team viewers if you want to add that. And then once you download it, do the install. Then you can go back over here to IE Enhanced Security, turn it back on, and now you're back to being secure as they're going to make you feel. All right. So now that we did everything here just to get the basic configuration done, we're going to go to start and reboot. So everything takes up. Okay. So upon reboot, you'll be going back to here. So I want everybody just to verify that their computer name is what they chose. Ethernet is showing a static IP. And if you chose to have remote desktoping turn on and off, that's again, your choice. So now we're going to go over here to manage, add roles and features. All right. From here, it gives you all the basic information before you begin. I don't really care anymore. Um, I've seen this thousands of times. So we're going to click skip this page by default. Okay. Now here you have two choices. We can do a remote desktop service installation, which we are not going to do, or a role and feature base, which is exactly what we're going to do. Okay, select the correct server. More than likely you're going to have one server. Verify that it is the right name. So WinK219, DC01, you know, perfect. Click on Active Directory Domain Services. And then it's going to go ahead and tell you all the other requirements it needs. Go ahead and add that. And then click on DNS server. Um, because for Active Directory to work, you must have a DNS server. So if you don't have one on your AD, well, then you must have a separate one somewhere else. And you cannot use, I mean, you could use Google if you want. I don't recommend it. That's a terrible idea. So make sure you click on DNS server. Click next, go ahead and leave all this greatness alone, but we'll be getting to a bunch of the stuff in here as well in a later video. Let's see here. We got the AD service. If you have the office 365 with Azure act directory, which is a great tool to have, um, go ahead and you can start configuring that, but we do not for this. And then here's all the information about the DNS server, about what it does. It is technically, like I said, the phone book for the internet. So we're going to go ahead and wait for this to finish doing its install. And if everything went correct, you will get the configuration required. You'll have your little notification up top here, letting you know, let's go and get this done. So let's click on the close, click on here, promote this server to a domain controller. 
All right, so now we're getting into the fun part. So let's go ahead and minimize that. Huh, terribly uh, keeps my name. So in our case, we're adding a new forest. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use a real um, domain. So for example, I own this domain. So in the perfect environment, when you're doing anything, especially in case you're going to connect cloud to it, using .com is perfect. Also, it's much easier to get SSL certs and different certifications when you're actually using domain level um, identifiers like .com, .net. Um, but when you use .local, for example, like this, um, you may not be able to get some certification, you know, some certs, not certifications, but some certs um, like SSL certs for your servers if you plan on you know, doing a web server and stuff of that nature. Um, so in this case being, you're gonna go ahead and choose how you would want to. For my case, I'm gonna actually use this. Um, but you can actually use, for example here, mylab.local or virtuallab.local. It's all up to you on how you want to un undo this. So, so click next. All right, and as the functional level, we can only go to 2016. If you, for some crazy reason, have other domains that are older on here, um, stop using them and just you know use this one for now on. Just pretend they don't exist. Don't do that, but you could. And the DSRM password. Okay, so in case you have an issue, you need to restore your directory services. As it says, you're gonna to need to create a password. So make sure this is a password that you can remember because you cannot recover it. And then you'll have to redo everything from scratch. Again, that was a lie because you can recover it, Microsoft has fixed that, but you shouldn't be planning for plan B on that case. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and create. Oh, we can't create a DNS delegation, duh, because we don't have a DNS server. Hmm. Anyway, we're gonna give this a few seconds to come up with a NetBIOS domain name. Looks good enough for me. Usually whatever it generates, I usually keep. Um, and then the same thing here with the default locations for the database, the log files, and sysfile. Um, depending on who you talk to, some people say this should be on separate drives or a different partition. And they're probably more than likely right, but in our case being, we're gonna keep everything as default because I'm very sure in most case scenarios, you're gonna see them all in these same directions. Okay, now this is a beautiful little thing to have. So if you ever plan on running another Active Directory, you can actually view and download this script. And what this script will actually go ahead and do is connect, for example, Windows Server Cores. It's very hard, you don't get the, you don't get the little nice beautiful GUI like we have here to do this, but this script right here will do exactly the same thing in PowerShell if I was going to import that over to it. So that's a little tidbit with it. You don't have to keep this if you don't want to. Click next. And now we're gonna run the prerequisites. And I guarantee we're going to have some errors, like we always do. Okay, so we have a few errors like always. You're always gonna get the allow cryptography algorithm compatible Windows NT4. Um, pretty much what they're telling you here is we have to go into our group policy and change this security setting to not allow anything lower than NT4, which is Windows XP and under. So if you don't have it on there, an XP machine or any need for this information, I'd hop in there and do it. Um, a delegation for this DNS server cannot be created because there's no parent zone. And that makes perfect sense because there is no DNS server at the moment. There will be, but not at the moment. So everything else though is perfectly fine. As you can see, if you get a all prerequisites checks passed successfully, 
Go ahead and click that install button and watch it happen. Which could take some time. So, like I said, normally I don't bother pausing videos, um, but I'm probably going to pause it again here and come back when it's at the end. Because if it fails, it fails. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, but there's not really much you can do, you know, outside of just letting the server handle itself. Um, to give you a little idea, if it does fail, um, reboot the server, try it again, um, verify all your information correctly. Um, cause I've never actually had this part ever fail on me, um, in a long time, you know, so I think you'll be fine. So see you in a second. So once upon, you know, the reboot, you'll be greeted now with a new setup where you're going to have your domain and then the administrator. So just like before, we're going to log in with the same password we've always have. It's just now connected to the domain. We also have a little bit of a network error down here at the bottom. That's quite all right. Go ahead and click configure the local server because I want to verify that the work group has changed. So in this case here, my full working computer name is win2k19-dco1.com moddiablo.com Ethernet's still on and we are all looking good here so let's go down here to well, I'll click on this click on the networking and let's see what's going on here with networking so we see we have no DNS hmm which to me is just fine okay so we are having a little bit of an issue with it, but that's perfectly fine. That's actually supposed to happen here. So when I ping Google, it still works. It still looks pretty good. Okay. So now we have to go over to Tools, DNS, and then we're going to check out our brand new DNS server. Right, and as you can see, it's already created all its own. So we do the forward lookup. There's all our information. See, as we can see, we have my domain controller right here. Beautiful. But we don't have anything in reverse lookups. So we're going to add a new zone for that. We're going to create a primary zone to all DNS servers running the domain. And we're going to do the IPv4 reverse lookup. Now we just got to put in the first three of our subnet. Okay. Allow only secure dynamic updates and click finish. And as you can see here, it was able to pick up all that information. Perfect. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take a quick look. And there is all our DNS setups. Now, I do also want to add actually let me go ahead here and all confuzzled back here I always have to put a second one in and sometimes I don't even leave the 192 down there as well um okay so in this case being we are all ready to go with the actual dns on this one now i do also want to go ahead like i said and add one more thing i 
I want to add forwarders. And oh, they're already there, so we're good to go. In the case being here with folders, you do want to always add a folder. So anything that's not locally in there, you'll have to add this. As you can see here, our root hints as well comes right from our folders. So if you go on to your actual DNS, you right click, go to properties, and when you click on folders, if you have 888-844, and then we'll go ahead and here, I'll add one more. Just like that. We're going to add Cloudflare. Or Cloudflare. Huh. Perfect. Let me go over here to that. And we're all good. So now we're like, well, we got to add it to it. As you can see here, network area went away. So what we're going to have to do here now is we got all this greatness, but I, I got to, you know, add people to this. So I understand that. I'm going to go to tools, active directory users and computers. All right. This is where all the fun stuff happens and where all terrible things could happen. But go ahead and drop that down. So in computers, as you see, we don't have any computers and listings here. But on the domain controllers, here's our domain controller. Users, we only have that. So I want to create a new user. Let's go ahead and do this. First name is random user. Username is Password. Password has to be a very crazy password. Can't be consecutive, can't be any. So for example, so in that case being, you have to have a capital letter, lowercase letter, numbers, and a special character to ins to add the user to it. Normally you will not actually tell them they can't change their passwords, but for this one, I rather just go ahead and do that information here. So under here, so normally you would say user must change their password previously, but in my case, user can't change the password and the password doesn't expire. So we can just kind of skip over those because my luck, I'll end up getting some kind of errors later on because I've been doing this for nine months. So we have our random user. Okay, Ma Diablo one. Let's go ahead and get this going here. So on my other one, let's get my other Windows 10 Enterprise up and running. So we're gonna do this as close to real time as we possibly can. Also, make sure your virtual machine is on the same network adapter. So mine is. Always keep track of all your information. Okay, so we're looking pretty good here. There's a lot of craziness happening. So from here, we're going to want to, only thing we have to actually do is just change the network panel, which I'm going to do it this way. Windows S type in C panel. Open up your control panel. So we're going to do a few things in here. First off, network and sharing center. Click on that. Change adapter settings. And we're going to change this in here. So again, you could turn IPv6 off like I'm going to. And I'm going to change the DNS to exactly where it should be. 192.168.15.10. Go ahead and close out of all that. All right, close this. Go back to all control panel items. Click on system. And I'm pretty sure 
we're gonna have, most people have to change their computer names. So change computer name. Click on change, and inside here we'll change the name, and we can change the domain as well. So type in the name of your domain. Oh. Perfect. So right now it's trying to contact our DNS server. It's asking our information. And there we go. Can okay, go ahead and restart? Okay, and on this case being, we're going to, have to click on other users. Now it says, see, sign into Ma Diablo, which is our domain. So in this case, I can now write our user and their password. And look, random user. So let's go over here. And there it is. So there's a PC I just logged into, the user I have on there. And in a few seconds, I'm going to show you that we're all connected and ready to go. Click on system and there you go. Connect to the domain, computer name, and that. So that's how you get a basic Windows Server 2019 Active Directory and DNS installed. Now, same thing here. I'm pretty sure, whoops, just to do one more check over here, because even though we got it to work, you see we're all on there. Let's just make sure the interwebs work, which this is enterprise, so it's going to be Internet Explorer. And there we go. So the way this shows, it shows our internal DNS is functioning as well as our forwarders is on this. And that's it. And the next video, we're going to actually go a little more in detail on, you know, are the rest of the server features here. Um, but I'm actually going to show you the next video will be how to install a server with Windows, with Windows Admin Center on there, or Admin Tool, I think it is, um, or Admin, Admin Center. Um, and on the inside there, you'll be able to actually use that as your main server for all your servers. So we're going to have, you know, an Active Directory, a file sharing server, VPN. Uh, we're going to do a lot. And if you can keep expanding out further, that's awesome. Um, there are going to be some servers we're going to double up on. For example, my web server, my VPN server, my DHCP server, they're all going to be on the same server. They all handle the same thing. Let them all handle exactly what that is. So stay tuned, and I will catch you in the next lesson.